It's midsummer in Australia, and on the edge of a forest in central Victoria, I've made a bird bath. In just one day, let's see what it attracts. As the sun comes out, butterflies arrive. These are common browns and are females. Females are conspicuous now as nearly all the males have died, but they are no longer necessary. This female has stored the seminal fluid and will fertilize her own eggs when the first autumn grasses appear. And here come the birds. First, it's a group of brown thornbills. They're what bird enthusiasts call LBBs, little brown birds, meaning that without close observation, they fall into a collective group that includes weebills, thornbills, and various wrens. A family of superb fairy wrens arrive. The two seen here are both female. They have rust-coloured eyebrows and like to strut around with their tails held high. But here comes the male, making it quite plain where the superb part of their name comes from. His beautiful plumage will disappear in the non-breeding season and he'll turn a similar colour to the females. He is joined in the bath by a white-eared honey eater. And here comes a white-throated tree creeper, quickly followed in by a female scarlet robin. Notice how the tree creeper always descends backwards. They spend most of their time flying to the bottom of tree trunks and working their way up in search of insects. For this reason, they always prefer to remain head up and tail down. It is very common for one species of bird to attract others. They seem to use each other to gauge whether it's safe to venture out of their usual leafy hideouts. Various species will also forage together. Satellas in the tree canopy, tree creepers on the trunks, silver eyes and thornbills in the understory, fairy wrens and robins close to the ground. And now a grey fantail arrives as an eastern spinebill can be heard calling nearby. And here he is. The eastern spinebill is a small honey eater. Yet it can hover around shrubs which gives it the appearance of a hummingbird. Later, another honey eater, the yellow eared. and then the larger white-faced honeyeater again. Only a part of the honeyeater's diet is nectar, and most eat insects. While this bird is unusual in that it hunts under the bark like a tree creeper. Later in the day, a family of chuffs arrive, and their calls can be heard in the background. White winged chuffs are indeed a family and form groups of seven or more, usually the offspring of the dominant male and female. They are an engaging and affable ground dwelling bird and all help to build the nest, a mud bowl on top of a thick horizontal tree branch. And they all take turns sitting the eggs and rearing the young. The sun comes out again and together a grey shrike thrush and a young crimson rosella arrive. The rosella is this year's offspring and has very little of the adult's crimson plumage. The shrike thrush seems to be in control here and the young rosella waits patiently. Moments later a mature adult is attracted. As these are seed-eating birds, they must drink regularly. This one is soon joined by its partner, looking rather bedraggled. It may be an older bird, but it's also probably undergoing a rather heavy molt. You will notice that it has no tail feathers at all. 
and yet it flies as well as any other. Now we are really getting some variety. The young rosella is joined by a pied currawong and a red wattle bird, the largest of the Australian honey eaters. The other birds here seem rather wary of the currawongs, and not without reason. Both the pied and grey currawongs are the marauders of the bush and readily pluck the babies of other birds from the nest to feed their own young. But they do have interesting ringing calls which can be heard here. The currawongs too are ever wary. A highly intelligent bird, I once observed one of them fly to the bird bath with a beak full of maggots. It had collected them at an animal carcass on the road a half a kilometre away and upon arriving it washed the maggots carefully in the water before retrieving the tasty morsels one by one. Finally they have the bird bath all to themselves. A little later, a male gang gang briefly drops by, showing off its conspicuous scarlet crest. Typically, he'll sound his distinctive call as he flies away. And here come the chuffs again, this time for a late afternoon bath. And have you ever seen birds enjoying themselves more? Most of these birds are from different years of breeding. The youngest are easily recognised, they do not yet have the very distinctive red eye. White winged chuffs are quite territorial and stay very close together. They preen each other's feathers, feed the younger birds among them and generally watch out for one another. On the ground they sometimes perform remarkable ritual displays, spreading their wings to expose the white bars gaping their beaks and bulging their red eyes. As the kookaburras call, we'll leave the chuff to their revelry. Tomorrow is another day.